Hello and welcome to the very first tutorial for the uh, dungeon card game or the card RPG uh, where we actually will try to make a game similar to this use a scriptable objects and it will be able to read different cards different types of enemies and uh, different things like that um, different status effects everything is just a data file uh, with a bunch of shells so as we play, we'll be able to actually make things in turn. It'll have back and forth with us. That's the entire goal. All right, so how we're going to do this, we're going to use 2017.3.1. So you can have anything around that or later or earlier. I'm assuming 5.5 .5 would work probably too with it. I don't entirely know. Um, so let's do this thing. So we're going to, we opened up Unity Hub, which if you don't have Unity Hub, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, that lets you be able to install different versions of Unity. So you can grab any release right off of here. It'll download it for you. You can also grab the betas. The 2019.1 is already on here. So we have 2017.3.1 on here. We probably should grab some of the newer ones. It wouldn't hurt. Um, so let's do this thing. Let's hit new. All right. So we're gonna make we're gonna make this a 2D template. All right. And we're gonna call this a uh, card RPG tutorial all right make sure you specify the folder you want it to go into mine's going to go in a tutorials folder i'm just going to call it card rpg i think you, can just, uh, you have to make the make the folder and then card RPG. so you can do that hit select folder you can bring it to that folder perfect uh and then we are going to create the project so this is going to be the setup and everything like that it shouldn't be overly difficult. It's definitely for people who have, I'd say, uh, s familiar knowledge with the editor and slightly familiar knowledge with how Unity works. But I will walk through everything and how we do everything anyway. Uh, anybody's Unity can set up any other any way you want because you can move any of these. Uh, we, one thing we do want to make sure is we do want to have set to 1920 if you don't have this choice you're gonna hit the plus sign and you can label it with whatever you want but you want to change the fixed resolution to 1920 1080 because it's the size of most monitors it makes things a little bit easier right so that's aside from i mean free aspect is okay but it doesn't most games are not in free aspect they're in the 1920 1080 ratio so it makes things a little bit easier so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we need to first off create a couple folders, right? So we're going to create folder. We're going to we like to keep things organized, so we're going to do scenes with a, with a underscore in front of it, or you can do it. We can call it whatever you want. We have a couple more that we're going to add in as well. Uh, let's see, so we have the uh, we, let's see, we have an editor folder. We have a refabs folder. We have a resources folder. That'll be where all the scriptable objects go. We have a scripts folder. We have a sprites folder. Honestly, that's really all the folders that we need. You can always add more. You can add materials. You can add audio. You can do this. You can do that. Whatever you feel like adding to it. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a new scene. We're going to do create scene. We're going to call the scene main. And that way we'll be able to save the scene. So we're going to double click it so that we're inside it. That way we have it open and it'll save into the scene as the normal. Uh, every time we work, we don't actually have to work in any other, uh, any other scenes except for the main scene. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a C sharp script inside editor. I'm going to click on editor and then create C sharp script. And we're going to call this on Unity load. So basically, what this is going to do is going to be an editor script that will automatically save your scene for you so that you don't have to worry about accidentally closing it and not having anything load up if you forgot to save or not having, or maybe the computer goes into an update like mine did while I was working on the tutorial and I come back and I forgot to save it and it ruined a bunch of it ruined a bunch of progress so we're going to go through and figure out how to take care of that all right so we're going to double click on unity load and open it up 
open up Visual Studio. Now on Unity Load uses a certain a couple a couple things that uh, deviate from the original, just basically just using Unity Engine, right? Um, so we're going to be using Unity Editor because we have to be able to save the scene. We're also going to be using Unity Editor dot uh, Unity Editor dot Scene Management. And these two libraries will be able to let us work with what we need to work with, right? We don't need system collections or generic. It doesn't matter if you remove them or not. It's not important. Uh, but we are going to get rid of mono behavior because it's an editor class instead. Get rid of start and update. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a thing. We're going to open up the square brackets and type initialize on load. That way it always works. Basically, it allows it an editor class to be initialized when Unity loads without action. So you don't have to actually call this from the top bar or anything. It just automatically works, which is great, right? Uh, provided that there is no er errors at all, right? So the first thing we're going to do inside this is we're going to create a private static string. We're going to call it scene path, all right? And then scene path is going to have a getter and a setter in it. So we're going to do get... And we're going to do return editor prefs dot get string loader scene. Okay. And then set is going to set the editor prefs. So editor prefs set string loader scene. And we're going to set it as value. All right, so whatever the value is set as for the get, All right? So we're gonna get scene path and wherever scene path is for that scene, we are going to set that to loader scene. So the next thing we're gonna do, the next call we're gonna, or the next method we're gonna do is called, it's gonna be a private static. It's gonna be called on unity load. So we can do editor application dot play mode date change. So you're changing from um, editing to play mode, play mode back to editing, or anything like that, right? So we're going to do equals, open close parenthesis, and then a lambda, right? And then we're going to create a bracket here. So I'm going to call an if statement here. You don't, you don't have to worry about If this is obsolete, it's not a big deal. It'll still work. Um, if editor application dot is playing or will change play mode, and it's not, so that's what the exclamation mark before the bool does, it means it calls not. So is, so is exclamation mark editor application that is playing. It means it's, it's not playing. So if it's, if you're about to change play mode and you're currently not in play mode, then do something, right? So then here, we're going to go like this. We're going to go get active scene. We're going to have to call editor scene manager dot get active scene dot is dirty. Right, and it's actually going to be encapsulated in an if statement. So uh, if if the scene manager is dirty, which means that it hasn't been saved, and we hit the play button, right? We're going to do a debug. Just so you can see, you get the response that it did save. So you're just going to say, like, like auto saved open scenes before entering play mode. Right? Go ahead, a period. Why not make it look all proper? Right? The next thing we do is we're going to do asset database dot save assets. Right? And then we're going to do editor scene manager dot save open scene. Right? So what does that do? That basically says, hey, I want you to check and look at everything that exists. We're actually missing a, a, a little semicolon right there. At the end, this is, this is one big, the lambda allows it to be one big line basically, right? We could have made this look ridiculously long in one line, but this is actually easier to read. And it's, this is actually just one line of text, right? Basically, it says if the play mode state is changed and it's going from, uh, it's about to hit, go into play mode, so you hit the play button and it's not playing yet. Before it does, you're going to actually check to see if the scene is dirty or not saved. 
And if it is, then you're going to save the assets and then you're going to save the open scenes. So you save the entire project, right? That's all we need to do for that. Okay. So the error is that it actually just has to be static and not private static. So what that does is basically every time you no, no longer have to save your scene. So after that compiles, we now have that existing. You don't have to touch it ever again. But if you were to do something in here, like make, for instance, a game object, you don't have to do this, but it now says that this scene is not saved. There's a little asterisk, right? The little asterisk there, you hit the play button, it now removes it, and it shows up. If we don't actually clear on play, it shows up here. Here, delete this game object. Oh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Auto saved open scenes before entering uh, play mode. So that's how that works. And that is the project setup. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be uh, using or importing the sprites that are included with the project. All right. So you want to have the sprites folder highlighted. And we're going to open up the, open up the zip file that says scriptable objects card RPG tutorial assets dot zip. Right. So inside there, there's a sprites folder. We're going to either open this folder, it's not required, or you can just highlight the entire folder. You're going to pick the blank card, draw discard uh, piles, the enemy intent displays, like the attack and defend and um, buff and disable uh, displays, the status effects like vulnerable and frail, and then we included a trinket too for you. You're going to extract all of these to wherever your sprites are, wherever your project is. Right, so for instance, mine is in the tutorial section of my Unity engine folder, in card RPG and stuff like that, right? And assets, sprites, right here. We're gonna hit okay. And it, they went in, there we go. Uh, we're gonna configure these to actually work in the project and make sure that they look as crisp as possible. Uh, so we're gonna highlight the draw discard, the enemy intent displays and status effects because they have multiple sprites. We're gonna mark them as multiple. Right, pixels per unit is fine at 100 because they're all UI. And you're gonna change uh, bilinear to point and override them for 2048 com and not compressed. So RGBA 32 bits. You want the entire color spectrum. You're gonna hit. You're gonna hit apply. All right. These two because they're single right now. Like the trinkets one can be multiple, but right now there's only one trinket. So this makes sense to have multiple. So you're gonna change these. These are single. You're just gonna make sure that these are also point and overridden to RGBA 32. So you get the full color spectrum for all of them. Right. Next thing you have to do is you need to open up the three that we changed multiple and cut them up, right? So we have the draw and the discard for the first one. So we hit the sprite, the sprite editor. We're going to change slice from automatic to cell size. And I believe they're 32 by 32. And you hit slice. There they are. So now we're just going to call this one. We're going to call this one draw pile. And we'll call this one discard pile. We hit apply. So now when we take the drop down for draw discard, we now have the discard pile sprite and the draw pile sprite. Right? As you can see right here. Discard and draw. Right? So now the next one. Enemy intense. Same thing. I believe I did 32 by 32 for these as well. So you just it should already have saved the the, the setting here. You just hit slice, cuts all of them. We're gonna change this to intent displays. Right, I'm gonna change it to in enemy intent attack. Same thing with this one. We're gonna change it to enemy intent defend. Or block, whatever you want to change for that one. This is enemy intent buff. And this is enemy intent to save. Okay, so all four of those are now done. So when you open them up, they all they all exist. They're all here. Now we have one more to do, and this is status effect. So these are 32 by 32 as well. We have vulnerable, we have the frail, weak, and might. So what they're all going to do, for instance, the vulnerable one means that you take 50, whoever has vulnerable, takes 50% more damage for X amount of turn. Frail is you do 25% less damage. And, um, sorry, weakened. That's weakened. My bad. Weakened is 25% less damage. Frail is the shield, the broken shield, and that's 25% less block. 
and might is one more is is um more attack damage. So we're gonna chop it up with 32 by 32 again. So we have a status effect of vulnerable. We have a status effect of weak. Third one is status effect of frail. And this one is status effect of might. And might just means that they get stronger. So we'll apply that. So now we have all the sprites ready to go. Next, we will work on setting up the card manager and the scriptable object for the card.